First of all, I just want to say my condolences to the family of Brody Lee, John Huber, who died yesterday, shockingly, at the age of 41. I am still very shocked by this. Um, the guy had just come into AEW earlier this year. I know some of y'all don't watch wrestling, but I just feel really weird about this. Dude, 41 is way too young, bro. He had a lung issue that was not COVID-related. And, um, you know, like I always say, man, take care of yourself and each other and take care of those you care about because you never know. You never know when they could go. And I did not mean for that to rhyme. I'm, I'm being serious. Um, I want to talk about Wonder Woman 84 one more time. I did my non-spoiler review, which is more of a reaction to the movie, than my spoiler review right after, um, like, the next day, because I watched it one more time to see how I felt about it. And the second time, it was weird because there were things I loved about the movie and things I hated. It was a very up-and-down movie, right? Like, there were things I really, really, really liked, and there were things I did not like at all. And my main criticism of the film was the final act, the third act, which I think was a big, big step down from the other highlights of the film. Now, before I go any further, I want to say this is going to have spoilers for Wonder Woman 84. So if you haven't seen the movie, this is not for you. But uh, what I was going to say was, you know, I said in my spoiler review that the fight with Wonder Woman and Cheetah was a big letdown. You know, they did a lot of CGI, which is usually not... I mean, we've seen big CGI fights in the past... Um, work and we've seen them not work. For example, the Venom versus Riot fight. I, I've I criticized that in my Venom review because it was just too much going on at once. It was very hard to see and just a complete mess. Meanwhile, the Black Panther fight with Killmonger that was great. So I mean, it just depends on the movie. But uh, this one I thought was a big step down, and also the whole thing with Pedro Pascal's character Maxwell Lord. Um, sort of being this, uh, being this, you know, like at the end, like the, the wishes and all that, I was very cynical, I didn't want to come off cynical in that video, um, I really didn't, I, but I was like, you know, this is very unrealistic, even, even within the confines of that world, you know, even within the confines of a comic book movie, it was a little unrealistic to think that human beings would actually do that, and, you know, it's just kind of, a. Uh, you know, I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. Um, but the reviews have been coming out, and I've been reading them, and there's, it's been very polarizing. It's been very... A lot of people are trashing this movie, saying they don't like it, it was bad. Um, I've seen people say 6 out of 10, which is funny to me, because 6 out of 10 is not bad. Like, that's actually a positive review. Like, 3 out of 10 is bad, but 6 out of 10, that's like, decent, I like it. You know, and actually, I would probably give the movie a 6.5 out of 10. That would probably be my review, which means that I liked it, but it's got flaws. And that's how I felt about the movie. I did enjoy my time. I had a good time watching it. I really did. Um, but it's not one that I'm going to be revisiting fr frequently. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not. It's just not one of the ones I'm going to watch multiple times. The first one I probably could watch more times. And I even said in my review that there was no scene in this movie that came close to capturing the no man's land scene or the scene, you know, in this with the World War One, you know, with her going into that little village and whatnot where they play the music. I said that in my review. You know, nothing in this movie got close to that, but I was surprised as to how much the movie was getting trashed. You know, um, because yeah, it wasn't that good. I mean, I'm not in any way saying it was great, but I didn't think it was that terrible either. I didn't think it was like people were saying it was like a horrible movie. It, you know, Stuckman gave it a C minus, and that's pretty much that makes sense. Like C minus is about a six point five, right? That's that kind of is where I stand. You know, it's it's got some highs, it does, and it has a few lows for sure, and it has a lot of illogical things. I've seen some people say the movie's cliche, and that's been, I've seen that a lot. And honestly, it being cliche did not bother me, and the reason why is because. I think what Patty Jenkins was going for, and I could be wrong, but I think what she was going for is the movie is a love letter to the 80s. Now, could it have been more of a love letter like Stranger Things? Yes, it didn't have that many 80s references, but it definitely was a love letter to the 80s. I mean, you know, it felt like a Richard Donner movie. Like, it, it, I, I saw that Patty Jenkins was taking inspiration from Richard Donner, who directed Superman and Superman 2. And... 
it's interesting because, you know, I love Superman, Superman 2. I mean, those are classic films, you know. And actually, Donner didn't only direct Superman 2. There was a whole controversy. There's also a Richard Donner cut. I'm not going to get into that right now. Look it up. I'm not going to go into that whole thing, but you know what I mean. But those movies had this sort of, um, you know, and, and those really weren't like, Superman came out in 1978, which was late 70s, but it really got a big momentum push in, in the early 80s, which is when the sequels were coming out. Um, and you could tell that this movie kind of felt like that. And I think that, I, I think that might have been her intention, even though there were problems in the script, especially with Cheetah's character that was kind of a, you know, she looked good in the movie, don't get me wrong, but she wasn't that interesting. She was kind of like a, she, were, like I said in my review, she reminded me of Selena Kyle from Batman Returns, like that clumsy secretary gimmick, which is cliche. Um, but again, Batman Returns was early 90s, so we have these movies that are right around the 80s, you know, 84 being right in the middle. And, you know, I felt like she was doing that on purpose to kind of make a fun little movie like that. Now, again, I could either way, if you didn't like the movie, you didn't like the movie. There, There's nothing wrong with somebody not liking the movie because this movie's not Citizen Kane. It's not Pulp Fiction. This is not one of those movies where if somebody says, I don't like it, I don't understand. Because there are movies like that. Like, if you claim to be a movie fan and you don't like you know, Reservoir Dogs, I'm going to ask you, well, what kind of movies do you like? Not to say that you're, not to say you have a wrong opinion, but I'm curious, because if, if you're into romantic comedies and sci-fi, you're not going to like Reservoir Dogs, if that's all you watch, you know what I mean? Everyone's different, but people who like comic book movies and cheese and things like that were saying this was not a good movie, but again, it's not an indefensible movie, there are flaws here and tons of them, I was just really surprised to see so many people trash in the movie, and it's really not a great movie, but it's not a bad movie either, I, I liked it, I enjoyed my time, but I didn't think it was horrible, I didn't think it was a horrible film, I thought that the action sequences were fun, I liked the way they nerfed um, Diana, I thought that was very clever, um, and it made sense, the Steve Trevor stuff was cool, even though Chris Stuckman did bring up a pretty good point about Man, what about the other guy whose body he took over? What about his life? That's a good point, yo. Didn't even think of that. That's my fault for being just focused on the movie and whatnot. But that's true. Like, the guy who Steve Trevor's body he took, what happened to that guy's life? Did he just not show up for work? And the ending, like I mentioned before, the ending was very illogical. Like, the third act of this movie falls apart. It kind of reminds me of Spider-Man 3, where if you watch Spider-Man 3, the first two acts of the movie are great. Like... I viv I truly believe that Spider-Man 3, if they took out the Eddie Brock storyline from that movie, just took it out completely, and focused on Peter and Harry and the Sandman, that could have been a pretty decent movie. Probably not as good as the second one, but it could have been a pretty decent little film, I think, if they had done that. You know what I mean? The third act of that film with Venom and Sandman and that whole thing, and it, I didn't like that at all. I did not like it, and that to me is where things fell apart. And it felt like they, they crammed it in, you know, and I'm pretty sure that's been confirmed they crammed it in. I don't think, I think this third act was worse than that one. You know what I mean? I think that this third act was worse than the Spider-Man 3 third act, because man, at the very least, gave us a pretty good fight scene. We didn't get anything. You know, I was hoping that Cheetah would be somebody who would challenge Diana. Like, really have a, a knockdown, drag out fight. And it really wasn't that. And Diana having to get the armor. I don't know. One thing I, I did say in my... Or I didn't really say it, but I should have said it more thoroughly in my spoiler review. Was Linda Carter, bro. Linda Carter is still freaking hot. But what blows my mind about Linda Carter is that Linda Carter is 70 years old. She's 69 years old. How is a woman at the age of 69? Is she drinking blood? Like, what is happening here? You know what I'm saying? With Linda Carter, bro. I'm surprised nobody brought that up. You know what I mean? Like, I'm shocked nobody brought that up. But it's too bad because, you know, I, I, I do think Patty Jenkins is a talented filmmaker. I think maybe she, like to quote George Lucas, she went too far in a, in a few places. You know what I'm saying? With this film, she went too far in a few places. But, uh, 
you know, ultimately, again, this is not a movie I'm going to be defending. Like, forget it. I'm not defending this movie because it does have a lot of flaws. I had a good time watching it. Um, I know a lot of people were kind of hoping to see more movies and this year, and we didn't get that chance. I saw Tenet. I saw New Mutants. I saw Silent the Hedgehog. And I saw 1917. I think that was those the only movies I saw in theaters this year because of the pandemic. And, you know, this is a new movie. You know, it might not be a the. I mean, it's in, it is in theaters, but I didn't see it in theaters. I saw it on HBO Max. It, you know, it is a movie that, you know, we all wanted to see for a long time. So maybe we went in. Maybe some folks were going in, like, thirsting for freaking comic book movies. And maybe I was one of them. Maybe when I watch this movie again in a few weeks or... I'm not going to watch it in a few weeks. It ain't that good. Maybe next year, if I watch this movie again, I'm not going to like it. Maybe I'll hate it. I don't know. But, you know, I enjoyed my time watching it. You know, I really did, even though there were problems from the very beginning. Even the scene at the very beginning, um, you know, when they were younger, when she was younger, even that was flawed. You know, so, and pointless, to be honest. You know, even though it, it tied into the third act with the whole truth thing we kind of already knew diana was all about truth so it was really unnecessary and it really didn't develop the character that much i thought her giving up steve trevor did develop the character more because it it showed that even though it was his choice as well it showed that she realized she has a responsibility but then at the very end she sees that dude and so they're implying they're gonna hook up or whatever so i mean you know what can you do you know, he's, Steve Trevor's already gone. It's very sad, but, you know, it was, it wasn't a bad movie at all. You know, it was not a bad movie at all. And, uh, it wasn't that great either, though. And I think some folks expected greatness and were let down. So that's what I think. Thanks for watching, and, uh, we'll talk soon.